Hello, and welcome to another episode of Scavenger Life. This is episode number 479 at scavengerlife.com. Um, so this week, eBay announced their fall 2020... Seller update. Fall seller update. Which most people get nervous about. Yeah, so anyone who has been around for a while, eBay does this. They do a spring... They started doing a summer. And Spring, now summer, and fall. And now they're doing a fall where this is when they you know, make little changes to the uh, site. Yeah. Um, little changes, sometimes big sometimes changes. Sometimes big changes, <laughs> yeah. And so you know, sometimes it can be a big, you know, where you have to like change how it, you run your store. This one was uh, fairly harmless and might be good. Okay, so let's go into it. The things that we were interested in was a, they started something called Time Away. Yes. Which is going to replace Vacation Mode. So let me first say what Vacation Mode was or how it was supposed to work and how we did it. So when we would go on trips, I remember a long time ago we tried to put Vacation Mode on, which puts like a banner up at the top that says, I'm away for two weeks. I will be back on this day. But it doesn't change your handling time. So we got burned by that because our handling time was still like a next day. Yeah. So we sold all this stuff and they, it was all and late. And it's all late. Yeah. Uh, so what we started doing was kind of like hacking eBay when we were hacking how it worked where we, we would just change the handling time. We, yeah. We don't put it in vacation mode because that doesn't do anything. Right. We would just change the handling time. And we would send people messages. Right. And so, and they would let you change handling time in distinct pieces, what it was yeah. like three day, five day. No, yeah, it was weird. It, it would be like anything before five days was like every five to ten days. Like it just was right. very bizarre. And then you could go down to four, three, two, one. And you could at the most do 30. Business days, business days, which is great. Which is great. So, I mean, when we would go, we took a couple, couple trips overseas and we yeah. were gone for like a month. a month, we could still sell the entire time. Which was very helpful. Yeah. And again, we would uh, message people as they bought just to remind them. And mm, I, it was like one in 10 people would, would, would want to cancel. It faster. But uh, most people were like glad to be told that, you know, yeah, it's coming they bought it. It was fine. But the thing is then while we're on the trip, Ryan would have to go in and change a handling time during those like yeah. after like when we were 10 days away, we'd change yeah. it. And then five. And that was before I had business policies. So I would be bulk editing. It was a horror show. 500 at a time. It was awful. Yeah. But that's what we would do, do to keep selling on eBay. Yeah. And we would come that's back, how we make our living. And we would come back from trips with like lots of sales. It was great. I would have to ship like over a hundred things when we got back. So eBay actually did something good, which is exactly what we had hoped would happen. And I never thought eBay would do something like this because this doesn't like really. It's not like an obvious thing that helps sales. It's just a good thing for people who sell on eBay. Yeah. It's like, great, you know? Like, this is It's great. a helpful tool. So, you can say, I'm going to be away for 10 days. So, I'm going to come back on September 10th or whatever. What day is it now? Like, September 23rd, too. Yeah. 10 days from now. And then eBay will automatically change all your items to show... It's dynamic. Right, and it will show when it will get shipped. So in five days, it will automatically show five handling, right. five day handling time. You don't have to change it, which is great. Yeah, I mean, so it's very dynamic, and I can do it one time and don't have to worry. Right, about especially it. if you're on a trip, yeah. you're like, I don't really want to be like changing handling time every. But yeah, the thing that makes this not so exciting to us is if you want to go away from more than fifteen. Business days? Actual calendar days. Oh, calendar days. It's not business oh, days. Oh, no. 15 calendar days, you're kind of screwed. Like, that's the they, limit. I need to double check, mm -hmm. but what people are saying on the forum is that they took away the ability to manually change your handling time to 30 business days. Oh, man. Oh, that's crazy. So, so you can't do change your handling time I mean, business policy. I would need to double check this, but that's what people are saying. Yeah. So that way, 15 days, calendar days, is the longest you're able to change your handling time. Now, the alternative is if you're going away longer than that, so you're going away for a month, they're like, well, just turn your store off. 
right. for half that time. For 30 days. Or for, for 30 for, days. For up to 30 days. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, but I don't want to turn my store right. off. And and to me, that's you know unfortunate. I mean, obviously, some people in a boardroom were like, okay, we'll do this thing. Okay, how long can we, how long should we allow sellers yeah. to turn their store to, to, to do their handling time and probably some guy was like, well, let's, Two weeks. 15 days is about long enough. I don't think it should be longer than 15 days. And it's like, well, why should that be your choice? If I want to do 30 days. And my customers are okay with if it. If it's communicated clearly to customers, then allow that to happen. Um, yeah. You know, not everything has to get shipped right away. I mean, especially for unique items. I mean, yeah. that was the reason why we were successful. You know, some people say, hey, this is a present. I need it like next week. So cancel it. But most people were like, I'm just so glad I found this thing. I'll wait till you guys are back. Right, because we're selling like weird kind of vintage items where someone's like, I don't really need this like right antique <laughs> horse brush. <laughs> tomorrow it's just but it's for my collection and i'm just glad that i got it for my exactly. collection even though it's coming in a, a month so that's that's unfortunate that uh, we'll see if maybe i'm hoping they change that a little bit but ebay are you listening i gotta double check that that would be weird if you could not change your handling time longer than 15 days like, like period end of story like to, to go around that yeah that would be weird um yeah anyway uh and then another thing that they did that kind of affects us is they no longer ebay will no longer show the buyer email address it's kind of like craigslist if you sell on craigslist right. they have for a long time anonymized people or you have the choice anyway to anonymize your email right so you can still email people right but ebay does an anonymous anonymization An where anonymization they where it's some weird you know long hash. string of numbers at ebay.com right and so you can email them through them so how were are you communicating like why would did you ever I need okay. to email people okay so like if you want to send someone um say they underpaid for shipping or say you want to send them a refund and you're like i don't like for some reason ebay won't let me send a partial refund uh you know things like that or like i had a situation where you know someone bought something and it's local pickup but they want to pay for the you shipper you know they're like well you know you need to send them an invoice for that and you need like their actual email and if you try to type in an email you know my name at gmail.com sometimes it goes through but you can like in quotes get in trouble and sometimes it just blocks you it's like we see you're trying to put an email and you're like oh <laughs> this is crazy so maybe this is an alternative where if you have an email, uh, an eBay anonymized email, and you email them, then they can email you back actual text. Here's my phone number. Here's my, you know, right. if you're trying to do an alternative pickup other than shipping or whatever, you can maybe do that. I don't know. I guess people are, so we're assuming eBay is trying to avoid people buying and selling off of the platform. Well, their official line is... They're trying to cut down on spam. Which, um, okay, sure. Which is fine. And, you know, sure. look, the world is getting more privacy is becoming more important, which is good. And yeah. so I can understand, like, a buyer doesn't want their email address exposed to even someone they Just random pay from. sellers, yeah. yeah. So it's fine. Uh, but there were some people on our forum, some people who sell, who were upset because they, they think that because now it's going through eBay to the buyer it's like ebay's always a part of the conversation yeah. which is kind which of is what ebay wants and yeah. so yeah you know whatever that's, that's true but uh other than that that's it i didn't see anything else uh in there that affected us there's something about like if you buy a luxury watch ebay will <laughs> people were like what somehow guarantee it someone it was like there must be like a luxury watch L lobbyist or something, <laughs> something to like stick that in the or like you know. someone on the boards like oh well, I I need to make sure my Rolexes are <laughs> authenticated if yeah. I'm buying them on eBay yeah. we're all like huh <laughs> uh so whatever that's fine uh okay so thank God Whew. so we don't have to be concerned about anything else until 
the till, spring. Till, uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we're not traveling anytime soon. But, you know, we sometimes like to take three-week, 21-day yeah. trips, a month-long trip. And, and I don't, part of that is scavenging. And I don't know what we would do if we can't extend our handling time. It just stinks that. That, that the only option would be, number one, to turn your store off for that time until you can do right. the vacation, whatever. Or have your store open, communicate with your buyers, and just have a bunch of late shipments, mm. which would suck. And then, you know what, what I mean? Would, but then, so what? What happens if you have a bunch of late shipments? I mean, can't I mean can't we we get suspended from the platform? Maybe because yeah, I yeah. think that's a danger. So even if you're willing to like have a ding, eat that if you had too many of them, you know, like we sell. Yeah. 40 things a week. I yeah. Mean, that that would be, be a like lot. 80 things. I know. That would be late. Uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. So if anyone from eBay is hearing this, which uh, I don't know, uh, like just let people choose 30 days, you know? Yeah. Like 100 days. No, that's a little much, I think. <laughs> or at least don't change it. It was 30 business days. It was 30 so business days. Like so that was like 40 something days, days which, was, that, which was amazing. Yeah. You know? Okay. Uh, I will tell you one little brief story, Ryan. So we are renovating this building on our main street in yeah. small town America. Yep. Where most people where we live are wanting to make America great again. Yeah. Which is true. Uh, um, so we've, we're done with all like the infrastructure of this building. I mean, we've like yeah. taken this building. It was built at what? The 1928. There you go. And we've really... Done all the infrastructure. It's a solid building now. We've done all the hard work. And now we're just doing all the, like, the painting, finishing. So I was down there painting some trim. You did a great job painting, by the way. I'm not a great painter. That's why I say you did a great job (laughs) with with guidance. But it's, like, one of the first times. I mean, we've owned this building for two years. Two years. (laughs) It's one of the first times I've really kind of been there just enjoying the place, so it's right on a creek, the Hawksbill Creek. Yep, which is like a little a river. Almost. It's almost like a little yeah, yeah river in the middle of uh, town. And I was painting right there, where yeah. I could where the a window was there and the door was open. And there's like a there's a greenway. It's probably one of the best things our town has ever done. It's amazing. They built this greenway. It's like three mile long. Yeah, that goes along the creek, and everyone yep. like walks in and walks their dogs and ride bikes and it's great. kids. And I'm just sitting there painting in our building by the creek. And there's just the sun's out, and there's like kids running, and there's like kids fishing. There was some kid fishing. Is this and like catching a little? I mean, and they aren't big fish because it's not you know a deep creek like little tiny perch or something. I don't know yeah. what kind of fish you are. You know, and he's like got his phone out, like taking pictures of himself with the fish. And then I'll like take it off and put it back in the. It was river. like so yeah. cute. You you even texted me. You're like you're like this young guy just like caught a fish, took a <laughs> selfie, and then put the fish back. Yeah. He's like you're like it was so wholesome. It was really like the <laughs> life of a small town. Yeah, and it's nice because I feel like you know we um, really do want to help make america great again but you need to do it by like trademarked investing in infrastructure because you know other than our building you know i would say half the buildings in our downtown are vacant they're vacant and they're in really bad shape and then the other half even though there might be things in it are not in great shape well they're not modernized that's the thing and i understand because it costs a lot of money to do this stuff yeah and it's Look, not as much as if you were in, like, D.C., well, but... To me, it's about, like, I, I get it. You know, some old guy owns a building, and he's like, I can only get a certain amount of rent, so why would I put all this money into it that I'm not going to get back for 10 years, you know? Right. Like, I'm just going to pump it for as much cash as I can. Right. I'll keep the a roof from a leak, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Other than that, maybe. I don't care how it looks, whatever. And, you know, and so it just becomes this, like bad cycle where buildings just get yeah, worse and worse. worse uh people pay you know the uh, uh rents go down and down because the buildings right. get worse and worse and then that's why a lot of small towns are bad and so yeah. 
I really think if we want to make America great again, we have to like actually invest. Invest. In, invest in, in infrastructure. Building and you have to really believe in where we live and yep. and make things better and be willing to have like a longer term to get your money back. Right. So that's my like pitch. Go out and make your country great again. Look, I want people to invest in real estate. I want people to invest in affordable real estate. Um, yeah. That's what's interesting to me. And, and you even started like in, I mean, we're kind of way off topic here, but you, you even started like an Instagram. Yeah. So there's there's an Instagram that I was inspired by called Cheap Old Houses. And they're like pretty fancy. Like they have a private mailing list that you can pay to get on. But But there was an article that actually got sent to us several times. Um, about, you know, a couple young people who bought in West Virginia. So very close, similar place for like $18,000, you know. And the whole point of it is, is here are little small houses or not small houses. Here are houses. Yeah. Not in big urban areas, in smaller towns right. and, and that are run down. Right. But they're cheap. They're like they're all cheap. under $100,000. Right. Somewhere like $12,000. Yeah, like cheap. But, you know, obviously that building is a shell of a building and the, and the person's going to put in, I think she said she was putting in like $150,000 in. And of she's course, like, she has to. And she's like a young person. Yeah. And I, I feel like the whole thing is not t- towards investors to buy no. and flip. It's like... Aiming at young people, like get out of urban areas, right. go to these little small towns, yeah. get these houses, rebuild them, and you and rebuild you have, the communities, right? And you have these gorgeous old buildings, which you know it takes a lot of sweat equity and it takes money. You know, it t- it's not it's not free. Um, but so I started an Instagram uh, and for our area because I. Am interested in having young people move here and afford it because if you can get an FHA loan at the interest rates that are hap- interest rates are under three percent right. right now. That's insane. And would you like to plug the name of this? Instagram? Yes. So it's it's on Instagram and it's Lovely Lou Ray Real Estate. So it's all one word, lowercase. Right. You can find me on Instagram. Yeah. You can follow me. Cheap, cheap old houses. Cheap houses. Now, look, I'm right not. Hand. We don't have houses that are eighteen thousand um, dollars. Some are forty thousand dollars. Right. Some are one hundred and fifty thousand. Right. A cheap house around here, like, would be if you found a house for sixty thousand dollars. That is like a great deal. It would be cheap because we're still not that cheap because we're relatively close. To we're DC. close to DC. Yeah. And we're by a national park, national forest. Yeah, so we have, you know, we're not in the middle of nowhere. But so, yeah, if you want to look at that, it's my new little extra project that I'm doing. I I thought this this was about, this podcast was about eBay. Look, (laughs) eBay can pay for a house. Yeah. We know that. Yeah, it's our, it's part of our eBay strategy. Well, it allows, look, because I make money on eBay, I have a little bit of time. Like, this is like a little hobby product. Well, it's funny because people will message me and they're like, oh, are you a real estate agent? Because obviously that would make sense. And I'm like, nope, I just like my town and I want cool people to move here and like renovate houses. Right. Because, you know, right now in our small town, because of, because there's a lot of work. Right. I mean, there there isn't a lot of business for people to come like and get industry. good jobs. We are mainly a retirement community. Yes, we are. And so people, and we know, I have a lot of friends who are of retirement yeah. age, and they come here and they're just tired. They're just like, <laughs> I come here like, I'm not, I just want to chill I don't want to do anything. Yeah. I don't want to like, whatever. Open up business. I'll join the B club, but like, I'm not <laughs> doing anything else. And that's yeah. fine, but we need people to move here who are like... Who are wanting to live their lives here right. and build and like do have cool a small things. business yeah. and have a community. Right. So it's not easy. Right. It is not easy. It but, is not cheap. But for it selfish reasons, we want that because it wouldn't take much. You know, if there were a hundred people, and and I'm not even that young, really. You're I'm almost like, fifty, I mean, bro. Yeah. So, 50 is the new 30. <laughs> so if we had like 100 people between like 20 and 50 yeah. who were motivated, you could yeah. change a small town. So we know, have a friend who's... With like excitement and, you know... We have a friend who's like between our ages, yeah. right? Um, I think he listens to this podcast now and he lives in town and he just bought a piece of land right. right on Main Street because he's like, I want to do something on Main Street like... 
I want to like have a community thing happening. Yeah. So he bought land and, well, and we're like, yes. I don't know if we influenced him enough, but I remember telling him like, bro, 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 you know, because he was getting involved in local yeah, community, uh, like organizations right. like, like we have. And he was getting, it's frustrated. Like and we have. I get it. <laughs> and, and I was like, it's good to get involved and get to meet people and have some kind of influence. But I was like, man, if you really want to, have real influence you just have to buy your own thing you do your own and thing. then do whatever you want yeah and like no one can tell you what to do yeah and i don't know he probably just came up that you know he probably came to that understanding on his own but i'm glad he did it and i'm excited to see what he's talking about you know yeah. what he wants to do so anyway uh okay let's talk about ebay, eBay. okay uh my journey of eating crow where I bought something by mistake on eBay, I am seeing the other side of what eBay does to you mm -hmm. as someone who buys something and doesn't pay. Yeah. So, um, just real quick, I got an offer on my phone. Yeah, last weekend. Which I thought was an offer for me to sell something. Yeah. But it was an offer to buy something. And I don't remember ever getting one of these before and I don't remember watching and I don't think it. we were watching yeah. it. I think we must have just clicked and on I didn't it. have my glasses on and you know <laughs> I'm just like if it's a good deal I'm like yes just go. take it so I bought it by mistake and then we emailed the buyer and says we don't seller. want this seller and the seller didn't get back to us right you know? of course uh, not and then eBay does not have a way to cancel no you just have to they're like you bought this and it's just like in my car in our car and it keeps reminding us like please pay for this please yeah. pay for this and so i guess at some point it's gonna end it you can only um, send a cancellation if you've already paid right which is and weird part of me is like maybe that's i mean i guess that's why some people do that to us where they'll pay for it and then they'll immediately cancel, cancel it. it yeah um, so anyway it's just uh it's interesting um just anyway that's just kind of it. look if it if it were honestly if the price were low enough i would have just bought it and resold it but it was like over 50 dollars, and right. i was like i can't just buy right. this and like it i'm not gonna make it that's how much it's worth it would have been a great sale for us yeah if it, were, if it were our item yeah yeah okay uh you decided to switch all of our items to global shipping program yep i GSP. talked to, i talked about this last week eBay send is I'm not liking it and it's it's cheaper for the buyers but anytime I call eBay about a problem where I'm like this never got delivered and they open an item not received case so eBay's like oh well there's an insurance program so say the item is $25 and the shipping was $25 well the insurance program only lets you claim $25 of the item of the item but not, not the, the shipping, shipping. Mm. so if I have to refund them through the case I have to fully I have to refund them the $50 right. so I'm out $25 right. I'm just like this is not this is this sucks right. <laughs> and and so be to be clear for anyone that is not up on all this stuff so eBay had this program which we loved I mean, it still exists called Global Shipping Program, right. where you ship your items to their warehouse in Kentucky. Yes. And that's all you have to do. Get it to Kentucky. Yeah. So it's a domestic box. Right. And then they hired a company, Pitney Bowes. Right. And then they take your item and then they mail it to... Overseas. Overseas. Wherever. Where it is. But as long as you get it to the Kentucky warehouse... You're covered. It's totally covered. So if it gets damaged, lost... Like, you don't, you don't have yeah. to pay your And eBay buyer. has always been good about that. Um, and it was great. Now, the buyers complain because it's more expensive because Global Shipping Program makes buyers pay for all the... Customs and VAT tax up front. And the thing I don't understand is America doesn't have any of that stuff. In other countries, they say, well, I don't actually have to pay a VAT tax on that. Or I don't have to pay customs, which is confusing because I'm like, that's what your rules are. Yeah. It seems very arbitrary, but people would get mad about it. So um, I don't know. And so the other way to do it would be the way we did it when we started, because we always shipped everywhere, is we yeah. would just ship like... Through the post office. First class. Or yeah. And, it, and stuff would mostly get there, and sometimes it wouldn't. And 
you just have to deal with that. Uh, that's why, look, I, when global shipping started, I loved it. Right. So then eBay, this year, I think, started yeah, was, this thing called eBay Send. So they, so not only did they have a global shipping program, they started another international shipping program. And I think that they are they did a partnership with DHL. DHL. And so how is eBay Send different than just sending it international on your own? You're like, Well, you're supposed to be covered. And okay. also DHL is supposed to have tracking the whole way because USPS first class or priority sometimes doesn't have tracking the entire way depending on the country. Right. So DHL is supposed to have tracking the whole way. Um, and I think it's partly a problem of a couple of things. I think because of the pandemic – Stuff is getting slowed down going to Asia and South America. Like, I've had two people from Brazil be like, where's my stuff? But then the other problem is because they don't pay the customs up front, it sits at the either the local post office or the local DHL office. And they're like, you got to come pay customs. And they're like, no. Right. And then and then they're like, I never got this. And right. you're like, well, you didn't, you didn't pay for it. Because right. one guy admitted it. Oh, I, I didn't I didn't want to pay for customs. And I'm like, now I have to refund you? That's crazy. Including, and then I lose and money. And then I'm losing money. Right. So I just... So does DHL not have a tracking number? So here's everything? the thing. This is the other thing that's annoying. DHL will have some tracking through eBay. Like you'll look at the eBay page and it'll be like, got to, you know, Chicago basically is where their hub is. And then nothing will happen after that. You have to go to this specific website for DHL. It's called like web track or it's like an e-commerce DHL page. And you have to enter the number there. And sometimes it doesn't have any tracking Mm. either. Or sometimes it'll be like, delivered to Brazil. And you're like, cool, why didn't it update on eBay? That doesn't make any sense. It's just, it's clunky. It feels not thought out and finished. And I have to pay for it, like, is what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah. Another thing that happened with Send was someone in the UK, um, in England, was like, oh, this got sent to the wrong post office. Like the the zip codes are different, and eBay sided with her, and mm. I was like, "How is I printed out exactly what eBay gave me?" Right. Eventually, I called and appealed like three times, right. and I got my money back. <laughs> but you're like, yeah. why should the buyer be like able to do that? It's Merck delivered. Right. That's that's like an insurance and DHL problem. So where I made the decision to just go back to global shipping program, so it means that. The buyer pays more, but we're totally covered as long as we get we're it totally to... We're totally covered. I get it to Kentucky. But, but this is what we talked about on the forum, though, and I think it's something yeah. to consider. I remember when we started eBay Send, our international sales went up because it's cheaper. Yeah. And yeah. I guess the, what we were discussing was if you're selling more on eBay Send, even if you lose an item or two... Yeah. It still could come out better than if you just do global shipping program but are only selling. So if, for instance, in one month, if I sell only five things on global shipping and nothing gets uh, – and everything gets to the buyer. But if I sell 20 things on eBay Send and I lose two things, I'm still – The thing that worries me is this. I sold a $200 knife to someone in Brazil the other day. This oh is before God. I shipped. Right. So I'm like – I had to send it eBay Mm -hmm. send. And I'm like, if he doesn't get it in Brazil, I'm out all that money. So is the answer, can you do global shipping just for things over $50? No. No. How am I going to do that? I don't know. I would have to like set up a new business policy and like go by price. Right. Okay. I guess I could. Oh, God. Well, why don't we just, how about this? Let's just see this next month. How many items we sell overseas just through global? And I have I have sold some things through global shipping okay. the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So, but yeah, I understand why because it's more expensive. Right. But look, man. I'm your partner. I'm supporting you. I'm yeah. just asking. it just it sucks to deal with those cases because because you right. call eBay and they're like, oh, open right. I an mean, insurance claim. Right. I mean, look, I get it. There's like a feeling of like unfairness. Yeah. For sure. Because it just feels just like unfair and, you know, not – and eBay isn't covering us. Like they should have 
insurance where we get covered for the shipping as right. well as the, yeah. the item itself. I mean, it doesn't make sense. That it doesn't do make that. sense. But, and so, but, you know, at the same time, it just also has just come down to a numbers too. I mean, if we were selling a lot more well, eBay sent. We should fine. do the numbers. Okay. Definitely. Like yeah. when the, when September is over, we should just see what the numbers are. Yep. Can we do a like a search by things we sold overseas? No. Yeah. I can I can go through and sort of search the page by month and mm. see the tracking. It's like a different kind of tracking number, mm. so I, I could enter it by hand. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I can't search by just enter see mm. eBay. Like that should yeah. be the easiest line item. Search right. by international sales. Yeah. Uh okay, so let's get into our numbers. I will say. We had another day this week. Yes. With no, no sales. Sales. Which uh, we, is, again, by the end of the day, we were like, do we even sh- Very sell anything? rare for us. We had another one of those days a couple of weeks ago. So I don't yeah. know. It, it definitely feels kind of summertimey, but actually, it turned out we had a decent week. We sold 41 items for $1,429. That's pretty good. In 65 cents. That's good. It's like 65 cents. Without shipping. Not including shipping. Not including That's shipping. separate. Yep. Um, so not not bad. Um, I mean, things we sold. Uh, we sold. I have an Apple Watch. Yes. And I broke it. I smashed the front of it yeah. while I was awoke, you know, doing work. And um, Ryan sold it for ninety two dollars. A broken app. Now it yeah. turned on and it paired. But, but the, the, screen the touch work. screen yeah. wasn't working, and it was cracked. And we are fine with fixing our own electronics, but the Apple Watch is not something you can fix it's very easily. It's not easy. So the funny thing is you looked it up, and you were like, people sell broken ones for like 80 bucks. It's sold it's within a week for probably one of the highest prices. 90 for, bucks. Yeah. And the way we do electronics is we do buy it now. No, no offer. No make offer. You buy, you pay. I ship it. You're done. I have, so when I make offers in the morning, like when eBay allows you to like send, sorry, send offers, there's like a handful of electronics that I have up that I just skip. I'm like, nobody's getting offers on these because they won't pay. (laughs) I just need it to be buy it now. So. And uh, and then we bought me a new, to me, it's a a used Used Apple Watch, but we bought it for 150, which... But it's yeah. great because it was one fifty, but I got ninety for the other one. Yeah. So nice. Now you have a protective case nice. for it. Yeah. Uh, and we sold. So I'm going to give you an example of an extreme version of our a list it and forget it. Oh my god. Uh, like world. Like what can happen? So we sold like a metal cooking. Pan. Little enamel cooking pot. Yeah, just like a cute little things. Like I, I, I. I would buy that again yeah, to resell. Yeah, we sell those. It sold for $11. <laughs> You're like, okay, great. We have had that up since 2012. And we could tell because of Eight the background. years. Like this rug that I yeah. had back then when we right. first moved into our house. I'm like, oh, man, that was a while ago. So that is crazy. Eight years. $11. Right. Well, I think I had brought the price down. I think it was higher in the right. past. However... Let's do the math. So let's say it costs us five cents a month Mm -hmm. to keep that thing on our store. Okay. I mean, even though we get 10,000 items we can do, I mean, it's kind of, it's within the $300 a month we pay. But why don't we say just for that one item, it's five cents a month. Okay, got it. (laughs) Let's go. (laughs) You're like, let's go. Okay. There are 12 months in a year. Yes. Times eight years. That's 72 months. 72 months times five cents. Is three dollars and sixty. Ooh, that's it. So, even selling for eleven dollars minus handling fee minus this, we still made some money off of that item. Off that little chat. Not a lot, but we did. Right. But again, that's I know people would think that would be crazy. We would hold on to something that long, but for us, the forget it part is important because if we, I think, if we were like going through our inventory every single week, like getting freaked out like this is too old let's let's lower yeah, the price yeah, yeah. i feel like we would not be getting the prices we do on many things yeah. because we're like trying to like lower the price to sell it fast i like to stick to price look i price yeah. things high 
and I'm willing to go lower and put stuff on sale and send offers. I send offers like three times a day or more. Um, so yeah, it's like, that's my way of kind of pushing yeah. things along. And I mean, people who hear this podcast in the past are probably get tired of this, but like, for us, we know. it's just important for us to understand that the kind of stuff we sell is not like high demand stuff. Yeah. Like someone wanted that yeah. sauce pot. Right. Eight years later. I mean, if I had made that sauce pot $5, I don't know if it would have sold any faster. Right. It's just one of those weird things yeah. that you just have to wait for the right person. And so if you're trying to like cram the price down, it probably isn't going to sell any faster. You right. just have it's to not, be strong. It's not exactly the price yeah. that's the motivator. Okay. Uh, scavenger of the week. We didn't scavenge anything. No. Our helper came twice. Yes. He got through a lot of stuff. Four hours each. Four time. hours each. Yep. yep. And he got through a bunch of stuff. Is he doing better? As far yes, as he's like, doing. He's doing well. He's tiny. getting through like my piles of stuff. Good. It as <clears throat> as I need him to. Right. You know, like he'll get through all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, he did all that. Okay, great. His photos look good. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to keep up with listing because. It sucks when you're like, oh, I have 150 things to list because I just like had other stuff to do this week. So I try to be listing. Is it tough that he's not doing titles? It's not that bad. Okay. I can do titles really Like I know what everything is. I mean, unless there's something where I'm like, what the hell is this? And then I research it. So you're mainly doing titles and price. Titles and and price. And and going through his item specifics. But but he's mainly doing some of that? He does. He's good. Although he'll... (laughs) <laughs> there was some flatware. Um, this is a 16-year-old 16 yeah, 16 young year old, man. Yeah, 16-year-old, but like, what yeah. year was he born? 2004? Right. He doesn't know anything. Yeah, he right. knows nothing. Um, but so like, there was some flatware that's just like stainless, <laughs> you know, vintage mid-century stainless, like grapefruit right. spoons. And he put them in like antique silver <laughs> flatware. Like, antique. It was I'm like, like, dude. <laughs> it was like built in 1980. I'm like, uh, these are from, I know that's antique to you. Right. But like, I was alive then. <laughs> um, it's just funny. So, you know, he, some of the categories, I'm like, it is flatware. It is not made of silver. Right. And yeah. it's not antique. It's solid silver. <laughs> like, bro. Like, it's stainless. We would be this, this stuff's from Sears in 1979. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, um, so that's that's hilarious sometimes. Yep. Um, but I, you know, I obviously. Well, the great thing about eBay right now is if you put in a title, you know, vintage international stainless grapefruit spoon bamboo pattern, it's like whoop collectible flatware. You're like, yep. yep. So the a- the AI of eBay is working quite well. What does AI stand for? Artificial intelligence. Okay. You don't know what no. AI no. is? No, I'm just in case someone out there doesn't oh, know. Oh, I was like, of all people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> am I you actually AI? asking am, me what AI like, Am I an is? AI expert? I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, customer issues. So, I can't harp on this guy too much because I made the same mistake, I guess. This guy bought a painting from us a couple of a weeks ago, or like a, a print piece yeah. of art. It's a print, yeah. Uh, so he pays for it. We ship it. He refuses delivery. Right. But it, opens a, a return case. It comes back to us. We give him a refund. Yeah. And then he gave us a neutral feedback. Asking so, for more. Wish I had more communication, which is annoying because I'm like, you opened a return case. You refused it. So there's no tracking right. other than our original tracking, which I checked. And I was like, oh, it was tracking. Sometimes it doesn't track it on the original barcode. Um, so we got it back yesterday. I refunded him. On the same day we got yeah, it. Yeah, like in the so, same afternoon. Yeah. And you're just like, what did, did you want me to have a long con- Like you did everything you're supposed so to do. So do you think we can get that I'm gonna try taken away? Because I'm yeah. like, I gave him a refund. Right. Um right. He didn't provide tracking other right. than he refused the package, right. but then I got it and I refunded right. him. So. so anyway, and then a woman bought an item. We mailed it to her. She then sent us a message saying, oh, it got mailed to her old address in a different state where she doesn't even – Yeah, she she's doesn't not even there anymore. anymore. But that's what the – Yeah, I'm like, that, that's not my problem. She, she says, I want a refund. <laughs> uh, so – 
I don't know. You, it's basically well. So like she bought. This. So this was actually a commodity item that we had quantity of. So she bought another set of them, and then I shipped them. And then she messaged me like, "Hey, those other ones you sent got sent to my wrong address. So please, please reimburse me." Right. I'm like, but I. I feel like that's an Amazon. That's crazy. I f- I feel like that's an Amazon thing where people do get refunds for mistakes they make and Amazon really? is willing to like give them their money back and stuff. It's just like that's crazy lady. It's like I don't know, that's not me. That's between you and whatever you I don't know, the people yeah. that live at your old house right. or something. Yeah. <laughs> like what? Um okay, things we learned on the forum. Someone was asking I've been selling on eBay for 10 years now. I recently switched to managed payments, and I'm wondering if there is a way to pay for my eBay postage with credit card that oh, earns yeah. points rather than through PayPal. Yeah. And there is now, right? Like, right now, we just pay for our postage through the managed payments. So. Yeah. Well, what you would have to do – so I pay for it through um, the payments that are processing or whatever it's called. Yeah. Pending payments. Right. I pay for it through that. But what you could do is you could switch to PayPal and have an empty PayPal account. Yeah, I, I think that there's an, an update to that that oh, maybe really? you're not aware of. And I'm not exactly where someone wrote on there saying somewhere where you can go and you can actually click and say just pay for it through this credit card. Really? Like I didn't see that anywhere. I mean, as a choice on eBay. Hmm. Well, I'll have to look on the forum and see if I can find that. Right. That well, be- I mean, how were you able to choose... The post is being paid through managed payments through our payment. There's payment. like two little radio buttons okay. is what they're called. Mm. Little click buttons. It's like, do you want to do it through your pending payments or mm. through PayPal? Mm. And if you click on PayPal, you can like okay. go and be like, oh, my PayPal account is is a credit card. Right. Like, well, so I could be wrong and maybe people can call in about this or go on our forum or write this. But there supposedly is a way now, instead of having to, to do the old way of keeping your PayPal empty right. again and again and again, you can just click this thing. We'll automatically just charge your credit card. Okay. Too. I have which, to look at that. Which PayPal, sh- I mean, which eBay should do. I like, know. You're like, just let me pay on a credit yeah, card. Yeah. Why am I not I don't want to do that. I mean, I get credit card points, but I get credit card point like fatigue or I'm just like I don't want my credit card to keep like too much money in my credit card like we pay it every month but you know it's a dangerous game sometimes if it gets too I I like doing it through managed payments I I think it's fine okay let's go to the calls or questions that people sent in this week okay you can email us an audio file our email is thescavengerlife at gmail.com or you can call our voicemail line and leave a message. The phone number is 540-407-8486. Hello, it's Gina. First of all, I missed you guys. I kind of got panicked when I didn't see you have an upload. Anyhow, this is a quick eBay managed payment rant and silver lining. The rant is I just got signed up to it like about seven days ago, I want to say. And it took them five or six business days, not including weekends, but five or six business days to pay me out the first time. And I'm on daily payment, which is, is uh, a distraction because that's not a thing. Never, you're not getting paid out daily. So I called eBay and they said that, well, they really didn't say anything clear cut. It's like, well, you know, and then and can because and depends on how they pay, the buyer pays, blah, blah, blah. So that's my rant. It's taking... And she said it could take up to 10 business days. My silver lining is that coincidentally, I don't know, but since I signed up for Manage Pay, my sales have doubled. Yes, doubled. And I'm not a big seller. I have 750 items listed. I like to make 300 a week. I made 600 this last week since signing up. So, and for no good reason, like this September isn't like a good month for me. So anyways, as much as I hate managed payments and I hate change, if somebody would have said, and maybe this isn't going to keep going on, but I'm going to be hopeful. Because if somebody said to me, Gina, would you be willing to wait a week for your payments, for your money, if you could make double your money or close to double? And I'd be like, hell yeah. I mean, come on now. Who wouldn't? So that's all I wanted to say. I got panicked, but at least all my... My stuff was in order, so there was no glitches of like, oh, God, my name is off, my bank account is off, something's wrong. 
And I'm thrilled that, I mean, we'll see. Maybe I'll call you next week and the week after and report up to you. But it's just kind of weird that as soon as I signed up, I started getting sales, more sales. I sell predominantly jewelry, 90% since the COVID. It's easy to buy, easy to source. I source it online, sit in my house, go through it, and list it. And I get, like, the profit is ridiculous on it. Really good. I know you guys don't like jewelry. Do you not like jewelry? I shouldn't say that. That's kind of a, a pre thingy. Okay, I'm going to go. I'm sitting in Vaughn's parking lot. It's getting hot. I turned the AC off so it wouldn't be noisy on the call. Always glad you're there. Got a little panicked when you weren't. Not going to lie. Okay. I love jewelry. I love selling oh, pure gold. <laughs> I No, I actually enjoy jewelry if I can find things that are marked and I like know what it is. I think the issue for us is we don't like to pay a lot of money for inventory. And yeah. I find, especially when we go to auctions, there are the jewelry hounds. Yes. The like gold and silver hounds. And they are in the jewelry section you know, where 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 there'll be like a bag of, of random jewelry and they're like going through with their loops. Yeah. And they really bid that stuff up because they know they what, know what they're are. looking at. I bet they make a lot of money, but it's a whole thing and you really have to be into it. Yeah. I'm a uh, casual jewelry seller. Like if we're sure. at a thrift store and Ryan will find a pair of earrings that are marked and, you know, they're like a quarter and we sell it for a hundred bucks. I like that. Like I found Chanel. Yeah. I found, I bought Chan- uh, some gold Chanel earrings that were like a dollar. Yeah. I sold those for a hundred dollars. But I'm assuming but people that. Rare. But I'm assuming people that are into selling jewelry are the ones that will buy like a pile of random costume and jewelry find stuff. and they find actual gold. I've and done silver. that some. Well, I've yeah. never found, found gold and silver, but but you're also paying. You know, I don't know. I'd love to hear, but I but I've seen prices of three hundred dollars. Yeah, more. for a lot. Yeah. yeah, I um, I do enjoy it, but it's I. Yeah. So on to well, her question. Yes. So, um, so I'm glad that you got into managed payments without any glitches or anything. I know it's a it's a pain to get started for sure, but I didn't notice an uptick in sales for us. She's saying her sales doubled, um, but I didn't really notice that. So I don't. Some people, you know, it's like when you do something on your store, like this is a week where I changed back to global shipping and there was a day where nothing sold. So I'm like, is that because I changed from, you know, like when you make a change, you think that that, that there's like a correlation there. Um, Correlation does not cause causation, causation and correlation, you know, that stuff. Um, So yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think that's the reason, but um, it's great that your sales doubled. That's always good when that happens. Hey, Jay and Ryan. Uh, over the past several months, I guess there's been discussions on the podcast about uh, eBay managed payments and how certain categories aren't going to be allowed on eBay when, when you go to manage payments. And one of those categories was coins, which kind of concerns me because I'm not really a coin collector, but I do sell a fair number of coins. And so I was kind of looking into it. And I found a website today that actually was posted in June, but it says uh, confusion over whether eBay was eliminating sale of coins and other numismatic items for sale uh, is cleared up by company officials. Steve Halupka, eBay's manager for emerging verticals, which includes bullion, coins, sports memorabilia, stamps, released a statement clearing up the confusion. Uh, he said that eBay will continue to allow the sale of coins, paper money, and bullion now and into the future. And he also stated that uh, people who list these items for sale will not be required to register for managed payments until these categories are compatible. So a couple things there. I guess one is uh, I can continue to sell coins and that uh, they are planning to get those categories added to uh, managed payments but it doesn't say when that will happen. Uh, but anyway, so kind of kind of good news for me since I sell coins fairly often. Thought I'd pass that along. Thanks. Yeah, I I kind of assume that this whole, I don't know, I, we, we don't sell coins, so I, it, it wasn't a big deal for us, but I know some people are really into coins and sell yeah. them, and they were really, like, angry that managed payments wouldn't do it. I just assumed it would be temporary. It was probably some kind of weird banking Yeah, I mean, look, eBay... I, I could never see eBay right. saying you can't sell gold Me. coins. Literally, right. pure gold. Like, eBay yeah. wants those fees. <laughs> I, I mean, that's a great thing about a site like eBay. It's like you can sell 
almost, almost anything, anything except basically guns and like endangered ivory right i mean you, you know, know I mean? yeah like the the things where if you're like yeah they shouldn't sell can you not stuff, sell you know? guns on e- i mean that yeah. sounds like the nope. stupidest question nope you cannot not even like antique like nope. no no guns or anything no yeah. yeah okay uh, um yeah so that's great i'm glad that was clarified uh because there are a lot of sellers that sell just on ebay for Coins and paper money and stuff like and bouillon. Mm. I'm not talking about the soup. Yep. I'm talking about the gold. <laughs> All, All right. right, that's it. That's it for this week. Check uh, out my Instagram. Yeah. Lovely Lou Ray Real Estate right. on in Insta. You can see what kind of affordable houses are in our area, and if you want to come and live here, uh, renovate. Yeah. Build. That's right. Come and be part Main of our, Street. Yep, East Coast. Mixed use. That's right. It's like the best part of the East Coast where you're in the country, but you're hour and a half from D.C., you're six hours from New York City. It's, uh, it's great. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, okay. This podcast, I'm, I'm just going to end it. I don't care if people subscribe to us. GavinJourLife.com slash forum. This podcast is ending in three, three two, two, one. one. Bye. bye.